morning. Uh, first of all, I want to actually thank Alan. We have been on the, um, with the TAD Summit for the third year, and I have seen how it had grown uh, over the years. You know, we started in Bangkok, and now we're here in Lisbon. So again, uh, thank you, Alan. And uh, today I want to talk to you about something very interesting. It's something that uh, last year in uh, Istanbul, we came and spoke about a developer ecosystem, you know, how we have built it and what were some of the criteria and you know, some of the, and we had a, a case study with our uh, telco at that time. So from that to today, this year we actually won the GSMA best technology platform, which is being used by Dialog Idea Mart, which is the, one of the ASEAT operators. And I'm going to talk about you know, what, what's the story behind. How did we go about doing this? How did we really build that ecosystem? And how are they making revenue out of it? So, APIs make money. How many of you think that's correct? Really? So, for us, what we have seen, all, all, most of the operators have got onto this bandwagon of we have an API system. We also are investing heavily on API ecosystems. But if you really look at, are they making money out of that? So APIs don't make money. It may be a surprise for most of you, but the services is what really makes money. So how do we build this ecosystem? How do we really build this ecosystem on getting services that will be used? I think uh, Tony talked a little bit before about the whole A to P market, and this is what we have seen growing extensively. So extending innovation capabilities. So this is what we are talking about. And the story behind the technology platform that we introduce with Asiata and not only with Asiata, we have you know, Vodafone Fiji using it. We also have M1 in Singapore using it. So we have multiple operators using this platform. And really the capability behind that is looking at these three areas. It's a long tail business model, increasing internal efficiency, and also creating enterprise services. I think that's where the really these three things comes together and that's how you actually build a service innovation. So I'm going to talk about three factors for driving innovation. First, we we'll talk about innovation by all. What does that mean, innovation by all? We all talk about a developer ecosystems. What we f saw when we used this capability, we came up with two other areas, developers that we all know about, but we also built a non-developer ecosystems that can really use these APIs and create services out of that, then the enterprises. So we actually coined this, an area we call the northbound innovation layer. So we said the you know, northbound innovation layer can actually sit on multiple API platforms. So when we go into a carrier to a telco, we will talk to them and say, you know, what's your API ecosystem looks like? They said, okay, we invested hugely. We spent uh, multi-million dollars in, in going onto an API platform. But are you making money? Really no. So that's where we come into play. We say, okay, let's work together. Let's build a northbound innovation layer. And I'll go a little bit detail what we mean in the next couple of slides. So we have a developer portal. Then we have a non-developer self-service ecosystem. I will actually take you through one app that we have built here. So this is a web services, um, WebRTC application. You can see this application is only five steps. We actually build the application. You can see it on, on your right side, the application being built. Then you actually see the simulation of that. And this application is to create a WebRTC a call that you can take it for insurers. So what happens, it's a, it's a mesh up application with USSD as, web, uh, as well as WebRTC built together. So what it did was it created that I want, I'm getting an appointment set up. 
with an insurance agent to have a chat. And when what happens is the insurance agent actually goes out and calls me to the time that I gave you that I'm free to have that chat. So what happens with WebRTC, the traditional ways, we have to turn it around that you can actually now, as a user, monetize the operator network and create the services on that. So that's one. Second, a platform to build successful businesses. Again, this is another interesting part. As a developer, if I'm building applications, it's not about counting the number of API calls. It's not about how much I pay for each API call. It's about the application that I build that bring values, value to my customers. So that's what we talk about. It's not about the number of API calls. It's about creating that ecosystem that you can build value out of your network assets that you're exposing. And the last and the most important part engagement with the app creators. So for the engagement with the app creators, we have three things. Incentives, engagement, and platform. So in incentives is something very crucial. When we worked with Dialog Asiata, it was very interesting. We went and spoke to them and said, okay, we have this platform, we want to work with you to bring this to the developers. Initial reaction was, we don't see an ROI on that. So if we said, you know, we don't see an ROI, we said, okay, let's work on that ROI. We went through a series of workshops with them. We built an ecosystem. We said, okay, we want you to revenue share 70% of your revenue with the developers. So that was the turning point. That was the turning point where they were able to actually incentivize their developers 70% of the revenue. As soon as that happened, we saw a huge ecosystem being built. Engagement was very key. I'm going to show you a couple of activities, but from the TAD hats to workshops to helping the developers to build that ecosystem was something very good. And then the platform. The platform was an end-to-end -end platform. So for an operator to be able to service two to 3,000 app developers, you need to have a platform which is an end-to-end. -end. From onboarding a developer all the way into revenue reconciliation. It's completely managed through the platform. So to have these more than 3,000 developers, our operators, they only have three people who is managing the whole platform, which is something very key. So let me take you something uh, area, I think. So we ran TAD Hack Sri Lanka. So this is the location we had. It was facing the Indian Ocean, and we had over 100 developers coming and we were actually hacking for two days. And some of the applications that came out of that have been funded by Angel Networks. We have three applications that are going into uh, being funded and uh, it's in the early stage. So what we did, and you see the CIO of Dialog was the keynote speaker for that, and we were talking about how they built the Dialog Asiata API ecosystem. For TADHack, we had over 500 registrations. We had over 150 teams, and we couldn't handle all of them. So we actually had over 100 developers hacking in three locations. So we actually ran the TAD hack in Colombo, in Jaffna, and in Bangladesh. And the key is that engagement that we have done is creating the, the ecosystem with the developers. That really brought the revenue for the operator. Now, it's the same platform that we are running with Dialog Asiata is in close to about five locations now, and we are bringing these developers into those locations, and also we are bringing those applications from those locations into other operators. So we have built a complete developer ecosystem. If you go to our dev space, which you call the developer ecosystem, you can actually register and see what's happening, and there's a lot of um, resources as well as opportunities that we are looking to kind of bring developers into the markets that we are in. So just a, just a sneak preview of what we have done. So please um, stop by at our booth and talk to us. You know, I also have our um, uh, chief business development officer here. So talk to us and how you know come and talk to us. You know how we can work with you and really 
bring this ecosystem and taking out into the, not only the operators, but also the developers that we are working with. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for Dinesh? Again, please stop Dean asking all the questions. Dinesh, the, um, I mean, you guys have done an amazing job um, in, in Sri Lanka, specifically getting operators to agree on the 70-30 revenue split. Um, talking amongst other operators outside in other parts of the world, what sort of reaction have you had to that sort of standardization or that level, that level of, of the high proportion going to the developer rather than the carrier? You mean in the other locations? Yeah, so not only in Sri Lanka, but we are the, most of the operators that we are discussing, we actually proposing to them if you really want to build that ecosystem, if you're really serious about it, if you just want to have an API system because we want, because the, you know, my competitor is having, you know, then, then it's not the right thing to do. But if you really want, if you're really committed for your developers and re if you really want to make a difference in building a developer ecosystem, the majority of the revenue you must try to share with the developers. So, um, so we have, I don't want to mention a couple of names, but we have between about 60 to 70%, we can still convince some of the operators to do that. And it's important, I think, to point out that that's only where um, you're, you, you're implementing a rev share with the developer. I mean, you've got another model as well, where targeting enterprises or just the uh, telcos customers, and they're just paying for the uh, usage That's right. of those services. Exactly. They're exposed through API. Exactly. So there's a couple of business models. I think uh, one of the big untapped areas, we keep saying developer, developer, developer. We think it's some abstract concept that out there developing uh, you know, applications that we do a 70-30 split on, but actually, an massive untapped potential with the most operators, it's all their customers. That's I think right. that's been a big success area for dialogue. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Any other questions? If not, again, they'll be here throughout the whole of the event and uh, have a stand in the exhibition area. So again, show your appreciation for uh, a leading uh, case study. Thank you so much, Thank Dinesh. You.